I know I've said this in every single video, but over 90% of the people who are watching aren't subscribed, so please subscribe. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Enjoy the video. All right, today's video is going to be just a little bit different. I actually had this requested in my last video, and I thought I'd do it because I thought it was quite a good idea. So I'm basically just going to give you seven effects that you can put on your Fortnite montage that you don't need any plugins for. I feel like this is quite useful because a lot of people don't have uh, some of the plugins that I talk about in my videos, and it's just a bit easier for them if I show them seven effects without those plugins so they can just quickly pop them on and then have their montage. So the first effect is called Lumetri Color. You just want to drag it onto your clip and it will have all of these options, but the one I'm focusing on for this effect is on basic correction. And it's down the bottom here, it's called saturation. So what you can do with the saturation effect is you can basically have it as a build up and you can have it on the kill as an effect as well, which I think is really useful. So what you want to do is you just want to find a point where you want it to start um, desaturating because that's what you usually do. And then you just want to press on the saturation keyframe here. So click the little stopwatch, make sure it's 100. And then you just want to go just before the kill. So you can use arrow keys to go left and right. So I use the ammo to indicate when I get the kill. So when it goes to three, so on four, you want to press a keyframe, a keyframe and put it to about 50%. You can go lower if you want, sort of play around with it and then one keyframe afterwards. I like to put it back to 125% and then I go along a bit more and then put it back down to 100% again. And then this is what it looks like. One cup for the night, me fucked on too bad. But you can obviously play around with it. I think it probably needs to go a little bit further backwards and then the saturation could go to 25%. So let's look at that. One cup for the night, me fucked on too bad. So yeah, that's pretty good. Obviously, you don't have this on its own. You'd have a lot of other effects with it. For example, the next effect that I'm going to show, which is uh, brightness and contrast. So you just want to search up brightness and contrast. It's under color correction. So you just want to drag it onto your clip. And just as it's going black and white, you just want to do the same thing, but with the brightness. So have it on zero, go to the next keyframe, decrease it to about 50, or it's really up to you. You can go all the way. I think it's probably better to go all the way, actually. Then go one keyframe ahead and then put it up to about 30%. And then find the other keyframe where that goes back to normal and put that to 0% again. So you're basically just copying the layout of the keyframes, but with this and then changing it as you want. So this is what it looks like. One cup for the night, I mean, fucked on too bad. So yeah, that's basically roughly what LMGK does actually in this thing. I already have a video on this, but uh, I thought I'd put it in here because I think it's a uh, useful for you to know because it actually really is a nice looking effect and it is used quite a lot. But anyway, on to the next effect. Okay, so the next effect I wanna talk about is a little bit different. It's called Luma Key. So you basically wanna put it between two different clips. So for example, I'm just gonna, it doesn't really matter where I am at the moment. So I'll just do this just so you can see. Okay, so we have our two clips, for example. So we have one here and one here. I'm gonna take away the uh, fade. So to actually apply this transition, what you want to do is you want to take the second clip or the first clip, it's up to you, drag one of them above the other one and then slide it across a little bit. I like to go uh, about 10 keyframes. So if we use the arrow keys again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and do that. You can do more if you want. It's really up to you. It depends on the, the difference between the clips. You'll see what I mean um, when we actually put it on. And then what you want to do on the top clip, you want to get Luma key, drag it on. And then you can see here it already looks weird, but basically go to effect controls. If you put the first clip on top, put the threshold to zero and then keyframe it to 100. But if you put the uh, second clip on top, put the threshold to 100 and keyframe it to uh, zero. And it should look like this. So there you go. So let me just increase the song a bit and you can see. So you can see that it slowly fades. It's sort of a fade transition, but I'm actually going to increase it a little bit so you can see more. So I'm going to make it a little bit longer just so you can understand what's happening. So here we go. So you can see that they sort of fade together. Each bit sort of changes color. It's a little bit different to a default transition and it's slightly cleaner and just sort of. Just feel right, I got dumb luck, big. All right, so the next effect is called color key. 
it's under keying if you can't find it by searching just drag it onto the clip basically what this does is this is sort of like a green screen effect sort of thing so if you have um a green screen say you're doing a um a, a cinematic with a green screen what you can do is you can press this little thing here grab the color that you want to remove so for example let's say i want to remove this for whatever reason and then just increase the color tolerance a bit until until it gets removed and that's about it really you can obviously feather it and stuff this is wouldn't be used for a clip like this maybe you'd use it for a transition for example for example you could use it on the start of the clip so say i do this i could have it as um uh, keyframed it so it's fully black and then just a little bit afterwards i can place another keyframe and make it zero for example so it will look like this one cup for the night so you can do that if you want but it, the color key is mainly used for um keying out green screens and stuff but yeah, you can obviously do this. One cup. It actually looks alright. Or you could have it, um, for example, a little bit like what we did with the brightness and contrast. Say I put a keyframe here, and then go just before the kill, and put another keyframe, and just increase this a bit, and then have this back to zero again. You can obviously do that. Night, I mean, but it doesn't look as uh, good as the other brightness thing. But the main thing you can really do with it is key out green screens and stuff, which I think is really useful if you're doing a montage. But obviously you can do this little... Um, introduction sort of thing if you want i actually think this looks really nice but this bit doesn't look quite as good okay on to the next effect it's actually called gorge and blur now you probably know of this effect already and the chances are you already use it but for those of you who are new and don't know what it is this is just a blur effect it's used by almost every single editor you probably know so to use it all you want to do is go one frame before the kill as i always say use the um ammo to indicate when you get the kill so four here and then three there so we're going to go one frame before the kill we're going to go over to Gorge and Blur over on the left and then we're going to tick repeat edge pixels and then we're going to click on the keyframe thing there and then have the blurriness on zero. Go one frame ahead and then increase the blurriness until you like it. I'm going to go on 30. I think that's uh, probably one of the best. And then just go along towards the end of the clip and put it back to zero again. And this is what it looks like. Obviously this looks a lot better with uh, time remapping and a bit of uh, exposure and stuff like I showed earlier. But yeah, this is basically the effect. It's a really simple one and it looks really nice. This next effect you probably actually see in a few montages without quite knowing. It's uh, called Leave Color. Basically what it does, it allows you to pick a color that you want to keep and you can remove all the other colors around it. You see, I think Flea and Milliam use it a little bit, but you you see it quite a lot in uh, montages where there'll be everything will be blacked out and it'll be red, only red showing. A lot of people do that uh, for like a sort of darker montage style. and. You might not have known that's what it was, but this is exactly what it is. So basically what you want to do is you want to just choose the color to leave. For example, just for this example, it does, it's not going to look good on this clip, but if you can get a clip that it does look good on, then obviously it'll be fine. So I'm just going to click on this um, little, uh, well, I don't actually know what that's called, that little pipette looking thing. And then you just want to click on the color you want. And there you go. And then just amount to decolor, increase this. And you'll see that it's all black and white apart from the color that I picked. And this is actually really useful. You can obviously increase and decrease the tolerance, but I, I like to leave that default. I think it's probably the best. Edge softness as well, if you want to. But yeah, this is this is actually what a lot of people use. You can do. You can obviously switch around. I think using hue is probably a little bit better than using RGB. And there you go. See, now I've got all the pinks uh, still in there, and every other color's gone. And this is actually used really frequently, without probably without you noticing quite what it is that's being used. But I'll just play it through so you can roughly see what's what it's looking like. One cup for the night, I mean, fuck them, too bad. So yeah, that's like what uh, a lot of people use in their montages to get rid of the colours but keep a few still in there. So yeah, anyway, let's on to go on to the next effect. So the last effect for today is going to be called VR Chromatic Aberrations. So what you can do with this effect is it obviously gives uh, chromatic, I mean it's in, the, it's in the name really, isn't it? But you just want to, usually you can just have this as like a sort of thing that's on the clip the whole time if you want. You might want to decrease the um, aberration just a little bit, but you really want to play around with it. It's up to you how aberrated you want it to be, I suppose you could say. I like to decrease the fall off distance just a little bit, but I, this is uh, roughly what I like. And then you can actually have it as an effect on the kill. So let's say let's say we go to the kill, so using the keyframe thing that we usually do. And then you want to keyframe the aberrations to be zeros. Then what you can do is go one keyframe and then increase the aberrations or decrease. It's up to you. Change it to positives or negatives. So there you go, like that maybe. And then and then what you want to do is you just want to um, 
let that happen for a bit and then obviously put them all back to zero again. As usual with basically every effect that you ever use. So yeah, obviously that looks better with an effect and stuff. As most effects do, you can't just put these effects on, on their own. You need to put them with stuff. That's why I do recommend getting plugins because a lot of the effects that you see are plugins and most of the plugins, you know, make these effects look so much better if you add them all together. But yeah, using one effect on its own never really works. So just keep that in mind. And that was all seven effects that I wanted to show today. Hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe and all of that. And I'll see you in the next one.